Hi everyone, Karina Barn here, Executive Director with Symphony Tacoma. Thank you so much for joining us for this special broadcast that we have this evening. Well, we made it. We have hit the final Jumanji level. I think last month we had the cicadas and the locusts and we have really, really reached the end. So thank you for joining us on this crazy journey that we've had during uh, the, the pandemic. And we're so happy that you're here for our final interview broadcast that we have for the season. So before I get started, I did wanna thank our sponsors uh, for the months of May and June. We have Multicare, Tacoma Creates, Gordon Thomas Honeywell, Pacific Northwest Eye, and Hammond Ashley. You know, for those of you that have been following us on this journey, we have hours and hours and hours of videos up on our YouTube page. So if you like what you see here and if you're new to the Symphony Tacoma community, hop onto youtube.com slash Symphony Tacoma and you can watch hours of footage that we've have. And we would love if you would hit the subscribe button on the bottom right hand side of your screen if you're watching on YouTube. And don't forget to turn all notifications on so that you know what we have coming up. Now, we are so excited because in the fall, uh, starting in October, we are planning to return to live performances at the Pantages Theater. This is so, so meaningful for us, and we hope that you will join us uh, in live and in person uh, at the Pantages downtown in Tacoma. And for all the, our new friends that we have here on our YouTube and Facebook pages, please join us. Please uh, join us at a concert. I'd love to meet you in the hall. I know Maestra Sarah would and all of our musicians would as well. So before we get started with our program, I did want to let you know that we are approaching the end of our fiscal year, which is on June 30th. And if you haven't done so already, if you'd like to learn more about what uh, your support of Symphony Tacoma will help do to our community, please visit symphonytacoma.org slash support for more information on how Gift to the Symphony uh, will support all of our musicians and all of our staff. Now, I am really, really excited today for our final interview that we have of the season. Uh, it's featuring this amazing workshop that we have uh, with an, a partnership, a new partnership that we have with the Cascade Conducting and this year composition workshop. So without further ado, I would like to bring on uh, my new partner in crime, Teo Benson. So please help me welcome Teo. Hi, Teo. How are hey, you? Karina. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for inviting me. So many of you probably already know Teo because he is a member of our violin section, um, but he's also the executive director of Cascade and Orchestra Northwest. So Teo, tell me about Cascade Conducting. What is this? Whose idea was it? And what do, what do you all do? Well, um, Cascade Conducting was conceived uh, in late 2017, actually. My wife and I, uh, who is Paola Madrigal, we're having a, a discussion. Paula is also a conductor and she, um, Cascade Conducting is officially a program of Orchestra Northwest. We have two other programs. One is the Ballad Civic Orchestra and the other is the World Youth Orchestra. And Paula is the conductor and music director of those two organizations. We were, she also is um, a student of conducting and had been doing other master classes around the world really. And, and um, they were there, there. We were just having a conversation about how nice it would be to have a conducting masterclass in the area. And she brought up the idea, well, um, maybe Sarah would be interested in, in, in hosting one or teaching one. And uh, we had both been, um, I had obviously been playing in Symphony Tacoma. So I'd witnessed Sarah's conducting and I was, we were both huge fans. Paula had come to the concerts and we were both like really enamored with her conducting and uh, just her style on the podium. So at first it was an idea that seemed kind of unlikely, but then um, it kind of grew on us. And I eventually uh, suggested the idea to Sarah and she was very enthusiastic about it. So that's how it all got started. And our first masterclass was in 2018. We had 20 participants and um, we, we it was at PLU. We uh, had a week of learning, podium time, score study, baton technique, those types of um, those types of activities. And then the following year in 2019, we uh, expanded uh, into a concert at the end of the of the of the week in Lagerquist Hall, a beautiful hall at PLU. And we performed Stravinsky, Firebird, and Beethoven Symphony, and uh, Sven. Sven Roning, the uh, concert master, Symphony Tacoma concert master, played a Mozart violin concerto wonderfully, and uh, it was just a huge success. We had members from the audience. The concert was free to all, and um, we had the, that was a wonderful week. Last year, uh, 
was the year where, as you know, we introduced the idea of, of adding a composer's component to the class and the compo making a composer workshop, invited David Ludwig, and oh, we were so fortunate and, and uh, happy to have him and, uh, and officially teamed up with Symphony Tacoma. And that's when we officially became partners in crime, I think. And then, uh, but then of course the pan we had it all planned out, the pandemic hit, so we went online. And it was still a great week. We had composers and conductors it's sharing information, learning from each other, and it still turned out great. Uh, and now the, the composers who had written pieces specifically for that week are about to have the opportunity to have them performed by Symphony Tacoma players in, this, in the next upcoming masterclass, which will be in a couple weeks. So Teo, was the transition between live and virtual hard for the for the master class? How did it, how did the students cope? Uh, the students were great, and we were all disappointed, you know, of course, and everybody was in that time. Uh, but I think one thing that was sort of nice about it was that it was early in the nobody had the Zoom fatigue yet, you know. So we were all it was like eight nine hours a day of intense Zoom you know, discussions and learning and no people didn't really seem to get burned out. In fact, one of the comments that most that I heard a lot was that they when they saw the schedule, they were like, wow, you know, eight hours a day for six days on the computer. And they, you know, sounds like exhausting, but everybody sort of ended up saying that it was invigorating and that it got easier as the week went on. And so, yeah, it ended up being really quite a positive time. And how many times did you have to remind conductors to unmute themselves when they were speaking? Oh yeah, constantly. <laughs> and uh, the, the the trickiest part of it was the different rooms, and we would break conductors up with with the composers to go and talk about the piece over here, and then there would be another room in here. I was actually the room facilitator since I'm not a conductor or a composer, and trying to get everybody in the right room at the right time. It was funny, and so every time somebody would show up in the wrong place, you'd have to tell them to go to their room, and that was kind of the running joke. <laughs> Nika, go to your room. <laughs> well, I think, Teo, do we have a video clip coming up about now? Yeah, this is a, a video that Brandon Jackson, who is the winner, uh, the recipient of the uh, African American scholarship, full, full scholarship for African American Outstanding Conductor um, last year for the online version, and he made a video um, about who he was and his experience with Cascade. So uh, yeah, let's let's check that out. Hi, my name is Brandon Jackson. I am a composer and conductor residing in Boston, Massachusetts. I hail from Chicago, Illinois. I am the recipient of the African American Scholarship for the Cascade Conducting 2020 Masterclass. And I have to say, I had an incredible time in this masterclass, not only working with Maestra Sarah, but also working with all of the other uh, with all of the other students in the masterclass. I got to learn so much, not just from the maestra, but also from all of these other master's students and doctorate students. Myself, I am still in my bachelor's degree at the Berklee College of Music, and it was really awesome to see such wonderful doctorate and master's students really having honed the craft of conducting. It was very insightful for me, and I had such a wonderful time and learned so much about myself and about the art of conducting. I quickly wanted to thank the Orchestra Northwest. I wanted to thank again Maestro Sarah Ionidist and the Tacoma Symphony. And I wanted to thank all of the private donors and volunteers that made this masterclass possible online and made it possible for me to join. Thank you so much. I had an incredible time. Thank you and take care.
Wow, wow, wow. That was awesome. And we have joining us a new, well, not a new, a very familiar face in Symphony <laughs> Tacoma, Maestra Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, I'm not muted. <laughs> I've got that down finally. Are you in the right room, though? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. <laughs> Am I? So, Sarah. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Well, what normally happens at Cascade conducting usually? What What are the usual chain of events that you have going on? So um, this has been an amazing uh, progression because we've done so much over the few years that we've we've been working together. And so uh, with my interest, both in composers and conductors, um, it's really an opportunity to develop something where conductors and composers can work together but also where the orchestra is a mix of, um, when we're able to have the orchestra together, is a mix of both conductors, Symphony Tacoma professionals, but also uh, youth players or community players. In fact, Karina, you, you played the trombone in one of those sessions and we were just, it was great to have you there. And so it's really about an opportunity for learning both from um, from inside out uh, about the music about the podium all the kinds of things that we don't really have time to to talk about to discuss how things work but also for the audience from outside to come in and and watch the whole process and then watch these talented young conductors have have a great free performance and we've been doing that at pacific lutheran university and we're tremendously thankful for that opportunity. This year, we're gonna be doing something rather different. As you heard Teo talking about last year, it was very different too. But this year, we've got something up our sleeve. That's exciting. <laughs> it, it, it is. And before we go there, I, I just wanted to share, you know, I, I'm, I think that the podium, that what we have the opportunity to develop here is podium opportunities for, minority conductors you know being like one of many conductors but being in a minority as a woman conductor i really felt it was important to push that envelope and give a, a very diverse array of conductors opportunities so hence the scholarships that pacific northwest provides the the, the cascade and orchestra northwest Here's another one of our conductors telling his story. So I thought I'd like to share that with you. This is Austin. Let's, let's watch the video of um, Austin. Hi, I'm Austin Davis. I'm a conductor and a member of the Chickasaw Nation. I grew up in Riverside, California uh, quite far away from my tribal lands in Oklahoma. And being that distant from my people, I often had to rely on indigenous representations in media and pop culture to acquaint myself with native culture. And what this ultimately amounted to was growing up with Disney's Pocahontas and uh, Dance with Wolves, which is inadequate inaccurate and certainly no way to familiarize yourself with native culture but it's ultimately what i had and i remember kids would say to me things like you don't look native american you can't be native american you don't live in a teepee and i think what the problem here was that people assumed that we died out some 150 years ago and our way of living has since been lost to time and, you know, based on what representation I had growing up, I would almost be inclined to agree with them. It wasn't until I started college that I started discovering all of these talented indigenous visual artists and fashion designers and authors. And I was finally starting to see that our culture was not only alive, but it was vibrant. Here we were making a name for ourselves on the world stage. But despite all that, we are still not very well represented in the world of classical music. I can name maybe a small handful of indigenous composers uh, who are far from the mainstream, and it's a similar situation with performing musicians. You just don't get the chance to see them. I'm grateful to the Cascade Conducting Masterclass for working towards offering the scholarship for Native American conductors. If we're going to be represented as performers, then a solid foundation is critical to our development. 
Now, I can safely say that there is really no other workshop like Cascade. Uh, nowhere else are you going to have the opportunity to practice conducting concertos, or opera, or new music even, alongside the symphonic masterworks that we as conductors are expected to know. And being able to work with Sarah and the wide variety of amazing clinicians, including concert masters and choral conductors, among others, has been a phenomenal experience that I'm very thankful to have had. You know, who would have thought that being able to meet with a physical therapist at a conducting workshop to teach us about the physiology of conducting would have been such a beneficial experience? You can't get those opportunities other places. It's absolutely critical that natives and indigenous people be given these opportunities uh, to advance in the world of music. We have a voice and a perspective that the world really should hear, and we need to show the people of the world that not only is native culture alive, but we're thriving. So Sarah and Teo, before I hand it over to you, um, Final question for me, how did the composers come into to the picture here and what's the idea behind that and, and what are they gonna do? So um, I'm gonna just dive in, Teo, and, and if I miss something, please please fill in the gaps. So, um, you know, I'm really passionate about commissioning works and about giving people opportunities. When I was a young conductor, I got to work with with composers right from the beginning. Um, I think if I, if I had more time, I, I'd wanna be, composing myself, but there's only so much you can do, so much time. So um, just trying to perpetuate the opportunities that that living composers can get the start they need, get the education they need. And also, since we had a composer in residence program at Symphony Tacoma, I felt this was like the perfect time to bring David Sirkin Luke who was working with us uh, with, the, with the Symphony Tacoma. We were programming three works by him and to finish off his residency, working and mentoring these composers was just kind of a dream coming true. So thanks to Symphony Tacoma and Cascade for like partnering and making this happen. And also we were able to get a grant from National Endowment of the Arts to actually record these works. And of course we couldn't do it last year. So that's the big thing ahead of us that we're about to do. And David is with us as well. So um, I'm really excited to have David here tonight. David. I didn't unmute, but now I'm <laughs> Hello, hi Sarah, how are you? Oh, hi, this is so hi, hi David. Hi. Incredible to have you with us. Th thank you. And um, we've, we've missed so much being able to bring you in person, but it's so fantastic we can next year, provided you've got time for this because Share with everybody what you, your your uh, big announcement is. My big announcement, uh, so last night, uh, my, wow, my big announcement <laughs> begins with speaking. Um, last month I was appointed the Dean and Director of the Music Division of Juilliard. So uh, I've been at Curtis Institute of Music for 20 years, uh, where you and I were classmates, Sarah, um, and am making this step so, uh, me and my wife, Bella Pristova, who uh, many of you uh, who are part of the, uh, the Symphony Tacoma audience will get a chance to meet and hear. Uh, we'll be moving to New York shortly, but I've already started the job um, and it's it's all incredibly exciting. So thanks for, thanks for asking me to mention it. It's a, uh, obviously a, a really big change in, in my life. It's unbelievable. And I'm not surprised you would be tongue tied because thinking about it, I mean, it's breathtaking. You have got one of the most important leadership positions in the music industry of the future. So congratulations. I, I couldn't wish it to go to anybody else but you, David. That's really incredible. incredibly kind. Thank you, Sarah. I wanted to mention about the, um, the value of adding the composer's aspect to the conductor's work masterclass. Um, that I saw last year online and I'm expecting to see even more this year is the just the relationships that are being formed between the composers and the conductors and the, the conversations that happen. It's just such a natural marriage, I think. Um, and j the connections that they make, I feel, I think that the opportunity for a group of composers to connect with a group of conductors and for 
you know, it's Cascade uh, conducting to connect to the Symphony Tacoma and David and Sarah and I, and, and uh, I, I, I think it's a really um, important um, growth of, of, of relationships that might, that's pretty unique. Yeah, you know, if you if you think about it, um, if you take the analogy that that composers are like playwrights, then the conductors are the directors, and uh, it's really incumbent on us as playwrights, as composers, to um, to get to know conductors and work with them. Um, the the conductors, the artistic directors, they are really, in a way, the seats of power, um, along with executive directors and orchestras. So it's very important as composers, just like a playwright who writes a play with no actors and no production and no director, um, you know, you just have your work sit on the shelf. Um, so it's, it's, it means everything and it's a very natural pairing for this program to have the creative artists along with the performing artists, the directors who can realize their work and also in a way really mentor the composers and say, you know, if it was written this way, it would work better for the orchestra because the conductors are in front of that instrument of the orchestra all the time. And we composers really, um, it's, it's very rare that um, any of us, even the most accomplished, get a lot of time in front of an orchestra. So we really rely on conductors for their expertise and guidance and, and just advice and wisdom as, as to how we present our work. So I'm really excited because I think we get to hear from two of our composers tonight. Is that right? We do. We do. And I think I, 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 it is my job to introduce them. And I have not done that. <laughs> no, that's all right. These, these are two of six of the composers. That, so we, in fact, we had seven because we also had an auditor. And so we did. What, you're, what you'll be meeting now is just a small sample of the first 2020 class of composers was, and I just wanted to throw in one thing, you know, it's so exciting to commission works, but it's all even more exciting to be able to have Tacoma and Symphony Tacoma give birth to new pieces and hand them over to the next generation of conductors who need these opportunities and oversee them and help them. So it is, it is great. great. I'll, I'll be introducing our, um, our young composers, uh, as Karina mentioned, as Sarah mentioned, we had we had seven composers. Um, with COVID, we didn't have the opportunity to have live performance, so we had nearly a weekly meeting class and lessons, and really grew a really nice little community, a little family together. It was very nice to come back to that and see them again. So uh, I'd love to introduce uh, Brian Morales and uh, Mika Dozama. Now, am I introduced? Are both coming on now, or or just one of our composers? That'd, that'd be coming. great. There's Brian, and there's Mika. That's great. Hi, Brian. Hi, Mika. Howdy. Hello. So, um, who is going first here? I have everything in front of me. I think Brian. Um, Brian, can you tell us a little bit about your your piece and what you have queued up for us to hear? Sure. Uh, we're talking about the the video. Um, so after Cascade kind of wrapped up, uh, I was in the process of working on this chamber ballet for like literally the entire summer. And uh, just a few weeks ago, we actually finally got to the stage where we filmed our dancers performing it. Um, this excerpt that you're about to see is from the later part of the ballet. Uh, it features Jose Rojas uh, playing the character of Harlequin. Uh, Harlequin is, of course, an archetypical character from Commedia dell'arte. So not from Batman. No, Different. not not Harley Quinn. <laughs> okay, just just checking. <laughs> no, um, uh, but Harlequin is typically a, an amoral character that doesn't quite know the difference between right and wrong. Uh, it's kind of done whatever whatever he's told. Uh, in this excerpt, he is a threshold guardian, and he's protecting the border of Commedia land. And he notices that there's a rock out of place, and he's a little He's a little inquisitive about it, but then he brushes it off and goes to sleep. And that's essentially the excerpt, but uh, I think it's beautifully well done uh, with choreography by Julia Bankstone. Great.
Well, that was awesome. <laughs> that was great. Oh, wonderful. And so can you tell us what you'll be having then for the um, for our, our composing workshop upcoming for the reading? Yeah, um, it's a short little orchestral piece that I was happy to work on with you and, and learn all these like little nuggets of information. Um, but it's a yeah, it's a piece about uh, it's called Threshold and it's kind of kind of a, in the abstract of just like this intensity, this like artistic creativity. It's always about culminating to something and then a release, a catharsis, if you will. And that's essentially what my piece kind of explores. Uh, and I'm very excited that we're going to be playing it in a few weeks. So Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's, it's amazing we've gotten to this point after all the hard work. And, um, you know, and Brian, some of the participants came in really at dot zero you came in your piece was kind of formed a lot of it but you still f felt like you had a lot of work to do what was the that process like it you know it's sort of like uh like the sculptor in the clay and you just have this big block and you're slowly chiseling away and then you look at it and you're like wait a minute no hold on i have to <laughs> yeah um you know it's the, a lot of the the little details that you start to notice and i think um like with our lessons together, I, I really started like adopting this concept of kind of not just hearing pitches or, or sort of thing, but really hearing like, what's it going to sound like with a single instrument, a single flute playing, you know, with a, a string quinta, you know, like I really started developing that inner ear, which um, I, I just really value that. So thank you for that. Oh, that's great. I'm so excited to hear these pieces. So that that brings us to Mika. Hi, Mika. Hello. <laughs> Mika, you owe me your quarterly update, but I, I will I will take it here. How how have things been? How have how have things been going recently? <laughs> They've been good. Um I recently have been teaching high school band and orchestra. Um so that has been interesting during the pandemic. Um but but also really fun to kind of find workarounds to uh, still get them engaged in doing music making. That's great. And and what can you tell us about your piece, because I, I know you're going to play for us a section of it, um, a MIDI recording. That sounds really quite good. And, um, what, um, what what can you tell us about this piece? What, how, what kind of can you fill us in? Yeah, um, so I wrote the, the piece Godless Galisteo for the Cascade uh, Conducting and Composing Program. Um, and I wrote it as a kind of early Father's Day and <laughs> late birthday uh, present for my father. Um, and I wanted it to be a time capsule of all the memories that I had backpacking with him and all the things that he had taught me about surviving in the Southwest in the wilderness, um, and then also reading the history in the land. So I really wanted to capture like the ruthless beauty of the Southwest and kind of the pure uh, like power and raw violence that's in the landscape, but also in the history that's there. Great, wow, that sounds very powerful. And I think the music is very much up to that. So. Uh... Let's uh let let's roll the tape if we might. What's the
fantastic. I was as as it was going into it, I was asking what the name again for the name, but it was listed there uh, on on the piece. Uh, really powerful stuff. And how are you feeling about hearing hearing your music with human beings playing it? <laughs> how are you? Uh, how how are you feeling about that? I'm pretty excited. Um, it's been a while since I've heard uh, any of my work performed by live musicians, so I'm really excited, especially. Um, a, an ensemble that's this big really uh meeting live is really exciting yeah i mean it's um i, I think for for many composers and anyone in music you know live performance is, is part of why we do it um and a, a, a lot of composers have had opportunities to write for individual instruments uh if, if they're lucky so um having a piece for for a full ensemble like this um, just on on the heels of the of the pandemic, fingers crossed, um, is a really really big deal. And I just think this program is incredible for its commitment to to you all to make these pieces happen. You know, Teo, Sarah, Karina, all the people involved in making this happen. Um, uh, it's just incredibly valuable and um, and and very virtuous. So we are very appreciative to to all those folks. Not to mention the incredible musicians who will be playing the music. So why don't we bring back in? Why don't we ask? I think Teo and um, Sarah to come back. Do I have that right? Great. And um, I think we can wrap up. Maybe maybe there are additional questions or thoughts, but. Um, I'm I'm just really over the moon to to watch watch this actually come to be after mm -hmm. an entire year of, of all of us just kind of being on Zoom and having a good time talking about music. But this is the thing that's going to happen. Um, maybe just to clarify what that week is going to look like uh, a little bit for everybody. It's the Cascade conducting um, the conductors will have two sets of repertoire that they'll be learning from from Sarah. Uh, one will be more of classical repertoire and that those sessions are going to take place in Urban Grace Church across the street from Pantages. And on Monday the 28th, Tuesday the 29th, and Wednesday the 30th of June, the afternoons there will be two sessions in the afternoon at Pantages Theater where uh, Brian and Mika's piece, as well as the other four composers who were part of the program, will uh, will have will be rehearsed and performed in a professional video that will be then um, presented by Symphony Tacoma. Um, it's it's all Symphony Tacoma musicians. It's in Pantages Theater, and um, I'm really excited to hear Mika. I can't wait to hear your piece with real instruments. I mean, it's pretty. I almost had shivers there just from the computer. <laughs> the computer instruments and it's going to be fantastic with live musicians and we've all been waiting for it and needing it so i'm looking forward to a really great week and i thought it would be nice to hear from each of you how you heard about cascade composing how did this information reach you because we're still building our um our notoriety um, should we say <laughs> I'll go first. I, I think I was just surfing the internet and it was like the day that the application was due and I emailed and I was like, can I submit to this? Yeah. <laughs> I remember. I, I had a similar experience, yes. <laughs> um, I think one of my professors told me at the time I was just about to graduate college uh, and one of my composing professors uh, told me about this workshop. So I applied very last minute as well. I think that's fantastic. Um, it's always so random how these things happen. I mean, it's, it's it's such a huge world out there with so many, so many budding conductors and composers, and it's so competitive and challenging. So I, I hats off to both of you just for jumping in there and uh, doing the work. Uh, I think being a composer is probably one of the hardest professions. I mean, to actually get a paid job and to to do that work and, and and you have to be very courageous i think and, and very determined so um is that is that about a fair summary i can't speak as a composer but maybe david does that sound about right yeah to to be paid money to write music is a great privilege for sure um 
it, it is a job. It's something that we do every day and that we have to keep working at and getting better at. And um, it takes an enormous amount of time and energy and commitment. But um, really, any profession in music is like that, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. Everything requires um, it, it. It's not really a hobby necessarily. It's not. It's certainly it's not fun necessarily, but it can be fun. Um, but what it is, is it's a great privilege to be able to do this and to, to have a career in it. So I think that's right. Great. It's a, it's a gift too. So you, you both got gift. that gift and uh, we're grateful that you're sharing it with us. And in July, we're going to be launching these recordings with young conductors and, and good composers will each introduce their pieces. And David, thank you so much for taking the time to guide um, this program. It's been truly successful, thanks to your commitment. And uh, oh, what a, we're what a tremendously pleasure. grateful. Thank you, Sarah. And these, these two are two of a, a, just an incredible group of young people writing music. And so it's, it's just really exciting to be a part of. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So we're going to go online on Thursday with with about, I don't know, 18 conductors or so. We do an online program and then we're going to do the in-person program. And I am so looking forward to seeing our musicians again from Symphony Tacoma. I mean, just can't believe how long it's been. So this is going to be very exciting. We have to do all of the COVID safety um, procedures and all of that, which we will do. And I want to thank Teo for dreaming up this, this project for me to to be part of. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, I believe um, our, to, to end the, the program, if that's where we're at, I think we have, we get to hear from uh, a, a, lot, a lot of the, the participants from last year's uh, online class put together a video and they're gonna share a little bit about how they felt about it last year. And, and we'll look forward to, um, to the upcoming online masterclass starting June 17th and the live version starting June 26th. Thanks everybody. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye. Easily, this was one of the best experiences of my life. I don't remember when was the last time that I learned so much in just one week. In a short period of time that has proven to be very valuable and, and very uh, worthwhile. It feels like the whole course is like really tailored to each of our needs and I, the scholarships that you guys give, like, that's amazing. Agradecer a la maestra Sara también que explicó bastante claro. Le entendí perfectamente a las explicaciones de los consejos que dio. One of the biggest takeaways is your philosophy in, in making music, how you communicate, how you treat other people. It's it's a super, I, I love the vibe in general. Honestly, like I felt it was like, oof, this is a lot of hours. But to be quite honest, day after day, it just felt lighter and lighter and I kept enjoying more and more. It's all part of uh, server's inclusiveness, which I'm so, so appreci appreciative of. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Sarah for being so kind with us. That made me feel more more uh, secure about what, the, what I'm, I'm doing right now. And that's something that I don't normally find. I've seen so many great uh, conductors just in this group alone. I just really think it's a special thing you've created here. And what I'm just amazed with is that the, the energy and the focus and the determination and talent that she puts into the orchestra she puts that into everything. Here, it seems like you actually have to engage this imagination part of you, and that, that, that's very reflective of, of the, the learning process, you know, like, and that's why I want to keep coming back. Hope Thank you come so back in, in person, and good luck to you for everything you do. Same. Same. Bye. Likewise. Bye. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Oteo. Thank you, Paula. You're welcome. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. Gracias.